So in the previous video, we established the fact that bacteria, prokaryotes in general, can establish some sort of genetic diversity. And that was grounded upon the idea of mutations and those mutations accumulating over large populations with short generation times. We're going to be continuing our look at genetic diversity in this next flowchart. So we'll entitle this next flowchart and video, Genetic Diversity, Roman numeral 2. Now, instead of looking at the mutation side of the genetic diversity seen in prokaryotes, we're actually going to be looking at a totally different topic, but one that's still quite important in understanding the diversity of prokaryotes, and that is genetic recombination. Now, the phrase itself, genetic recombination, should not be new to any of us, as we did look at this in Bio 115, and we saw this in the meiotic events that involved crossing over and synapsis things of that nature. It's a little bit different in prokaryotes. Specifically, we'll begin with a bit of background in terms of what we're going to recombine, what we're going to mix and match in order to get some genetic diversity. Remember the key overarching point, diversity. Things are going to be different from one another even though we undergo replicative asexual reproduction. Now, in terms of background, Genetic recombination in prokaryotes is simply the combining of DNA from two different resources, two different sources. So we'll write that down. Combining DNA, mixing, let's say, DNA from two different resources. From two different, that's our keyword here, different resources. Whatever they may be. In this situation, we're going to be looking at, uh, not resources actually, let's just say sources. We're going to be looking at a prokaryotic source. Now, in eukaryotes, just to ground our knowledge, we've seen this before. In eukaryotes, this is done through a process that we studied in great detail, meiosis, and also the fact that we have fertilization occur between sperm and egg, both of which combine DNA from two different sources, mom and dad, and undergo this fertilization or meiotic division event involving synapsis and crossing over, all of those steps that we saw. Now, in prokaryotes, it's a little bit different. In prokaryotes, we actually are going to separate the types of genetic recombination into three major components. They're going to be a genetic recombination known as transformation. That's the number one that we'll go over. Number two, another type, would be transduction. These are separate, independent events that can occur in prokaryotes. And number three, one that a lot of people are already familiar with, is conjugation. Okay? So we have transformation, transduction, and conjugation, all of which classify themselves underneath this broad uh, umbrella term of horizontal, horizontal gene transfer. All three are examples of horizontal gene transfer in prokaryotes. What is horizontal gene transfer? Specifically, we can define all three of these with this term and further state that horizontal gene transfer is simply going to be the movement of genes, that's the gene transfer part, movement of genes from one individual, from one individual, I-N-D for individual, of one species, so this is a one species, so one letter P here, of one species to an individual of another species, to IND of another species. What are we doing essentially? Combining DNA from two different sources. And that's exactly what we see in horizontal gene transfer. That's exactly what we see in transformation, transduction, and conjugation. So let's go over these. The first one we're going to go over is transformation. What does transformation entail? So we'll do it over here. Transformation. Remember, this is a type of genetic recombination that promotes genetic diversity in prokaryotes, only prokaryotes. So what we do in transformation is the following. Prokaryotic cells, so I'll say pro-cells for short, take up DNA from surroundings. That's it. Take up DNA from the surroundings. Essentially, there's free-floating DNA for whatever reason. We don't need to get into those details. And this prokaryotic cell will just scoop it up. We'll literally phagocytose it, maybe pinocytose it, whatever it may be. This is uh, exemplified by something that we actually went over in Bio 1 when we talked about DNA. 
and it being the genetic material of life, uh, the Griffith experiment. Fred Griffith and his experiment was grounded upon this idea of transformation. He transformed different cells, and this is exemplified by figure 16.2, just to refresh your memory on the Griffith experiment. So that's transformation in a nutshell. Basically, DNA is taken up by a prokaryotic cell. It's in the environment, and the prokaryotic cell just scoops it up. That's transformation. Transduction, we'll do right over here. Transduction. This is our second out of the three types of genetic recombination in prokaryotes. Transduction, which is again a type of horizontal gene transfer. We take the genes from one individual, let's say that's on the outside, um, and mix them with another individual, another species, and that's the cell that's engulfing it. That's the transformation side of the story. What about the transduction side? In this situation, we have phages doing the work. We know what phages are from our virology lecture. Phages, or bacteriophages, or viruses that infect bacteria. Phages are the ones that will transfer. So phages, bacterial viruses, transfer prokaryotic genes. So transfer of genes, of course, horizontal gene transfer again. Prokaryotic genes from one host cell to another. So from one species to another, essentially. And that's transduction. HC for host cell. Now, the key idea here is the following. During phage replication, more specifically, let's say, during phage replication, something that we went over in great detail in our virology lecture, uh, lytic and lysogenic cycle, during phage replication, fragment of host DNA, this is how it happens, this is how transduction happens, fragment, so a small piece of the host DNA, which is, let's say, species 1, will accidentally be packaged, so we'll say accidentally, it just happens, accidentally, packaged, combined, what have you, packaged into new viral, into new viral particles. So you know how the virus self-assembles itself? During this self-assembly, during this replication more generally speaking, some of the host DNA, aka a different species, will mix and match with the viral particles, aka the viral DNA. Thus we have horizontal trans gene transfer, movement of genes from one individual of one species, virus, to an individual of another species, host cell, whatever it may be. So that's our example of transduction. Just remember with transduction it certainly involves viruses, phages specifically, because we're talking about bacteria genetic recombination, prokaryotic genetic recombination more broadly. Finally, last one, we did transformation, we did transduction. Let's conclude with conjugation. This is the broadest of all of them um, and the most important to understand, um, at least in terms of how much you need to know. Conjugation is the following. So we'll define it broadly at the top. This is genetic material transferred between prokaryotic cells. Very simple, very straightforward definition. Genetic gen material transferred, again, horizontal gene transfer, between prokaryotic cells between pro cells. So one species to another. Now, more specifically, genetic recombination, uh, conjugation, this is going to involve the following. The donor cell, there will be a donor cell in this situation, we'll get into that in just a second. Donor cell attaches to recipient via a pillus. Attaches to the recipient, there's a donor and there's a recipient in this situation of conjugation, via pillus. This is a structure that allows for conjugation in a bacterial cell. Um, pulls it closer. That's the second sort of step. Pulls it closer. And when we say it, we mean the other prokaryotic cell. So we have pulls it closer and transfers DNA. Transfers DNA. Who transfers DNA? the donor cell. Who receives the DNA? The recipient. So donor cell, recipient, this is a one-way transfer. Key idea here, one way. Put that in big bold letters, capital letters. One-way transfer of genetic material, thus is genetic recombination, because it satisfies this horizontal gene transfer component that we defined. Now, a couple of details to remember about this. We have to remember something known as the F factor. This will give us a better idea of what donor and recipient really means. The F factor, otherwise known as the fertility factor, perfect name for something that's devoted to this type of genetic transfer and genetic recombination. 
the f factor will be something that uh, is defined as a place of DNA, so genetic information, uh, uh, not a place, but a piece of DNA. Let me rewrite that. A piece, that makes more sense, of DNA to, needed to make an important structure, this guy right here. Piece of DNA needed to make pillus. If you do not have the F factor, you cannot make a pillus. If you cannot make a pillus, you cannot do conjugation. If you cannot do conjugation, you cannot do transfer of genetic material between prokaryotic cells. You get the idea. So, now, this F factor will usually be on the bacterial chromosome, this piece of DNA, the specific DNA that's going to code for a pillus, essentially. Or, it can also be on the other genetic material that we know of in a prokaryotic cell, which would be not on the chromosome, but on the plasmid, that small circular piece of DNA. So both of these can have the genes necessary for an F factor, for a pillus to be coded for. And a pillus is just that extension that's going to allow grabbing and pulling in, thus transfer of DNA eventually. Last two things to know about this. What we have to sort of uh, put into detail is the idea of a donor cell and a recipient in terms of this F factor. And it makes sense, the following uh, couple of scenarios. Cells with F plasmid, so those that can make a pillus essentially, are DNA donors. They are DNA donors. That makes sense. They have the genes to make a pillus. They have the genes to pull something closer. They have the genes to transfer DNA to a recipient. Thus, we call these cells F positive. They are F positive, F plus. Okay? And then, of course, on the other side of that scenario, we have cells without, they do not, without F factor. They do not have this F factor, this fertility factor. Thus, they are always going to be R. DNA recipients, put that in big letters, recipients. They only receive, never donate. So they are DNA recipients. They are thus F minus. Now, you might see HFR mentioned around in your notes or maybe in your uh, textbook. Don't worry too much about HFR. Know what it means to be F plus. Know what it means to be F minus. This is all very, very nicely exemplified by figure. 27.13a. Focus on 27.13a to really get a good understanding of conjugation and also for transduction. I forgot to mention this. This is seen very nicely in figure 27.11, figure 27.11, figure 27.13a. All of these are going to be very nicely uh, giving us the overall idea of genetic recombination, mixing and matching genes. This is not necessarily reproduction. This is just genetic diversity exemplified by recombination. Things mixing and matching in order for us to get genetic material being transferred via horizontal gene transfer. As we mentioned, these are the ways that it's done, and there are the uh, details that you should definitely understand.